If you don't know how to navigate the work environment, it can be very difficult to get things done. So let me show you some tips and tricks here to get you up and running quickly. With the settings set from the previous lesson, these apply. Middle mouse will actually move the part around like this. You can change what type of orientation you want your things to have here, from a constrained orbit to a free orbit with these options down here on the bottom. And you can see how that changes how you move things around. You can feel free to play around with that at some point. Holding shift down and middle clicking will zoom you in and out to the center of the screen like so. If I want to fill this part to my screen, I can double middle mouse click like this and it will zoom all. Holding control and then pushing down middle mouse button, I can pan the camera around like this. You'll notice in the top right we have a cube and there's several different things that we can click on here for standard views, such as the house to bring you back to your isometric view that you start with. Or if I click the front here, I can move to the front plane. Or if you click on the edge, you can move to the edge. If you ever get lost, take a look at the cube in the top right. You can change your display layout if you want to by looking down here in the viewports. Another option is multiple views. I don't use this too often, but it's definitely possible. So you can have a top, front, and right view like this. And you can even grab this cross and move it around depending on what you're doing here. So if you were to select a face here, you can work on it in this view and see how it's working out in this view up there. You can change this back to the simple view, which is what I'm going to use for most of the lessons. Your grid options are just to the left of that. So if you want to see the layout grid, you can have it on or off. And this is where you also have your snap to grid option with your grid settings below that. Your display type is just to the left of this, and there's many different options inside of here, such as your visual style. If we wanted to change this to wireframe with hidden edges, we could do something like that. But for the most part, I stick with shaded with visible edges only. One that we will use quite a bit here is object visibility. So for example, you can see all work features that we have here. As we get into assemblies, this can help us hide a lot of junk on the screen to keep things from getting too cluttered. A lot of the things that will show up on the screen are listed up over here in the top left, which is your browser, such as the origin, your different axis, such as X, Y, and Z, and then all the other ones that we will add at some point here, your bodies, which in this case is this body right there, and the sketches that we use to define that body, which is in this case sketch two, our first square, and then the circle on top of it, which you'll see in the next lesson. One thing we'll do quite often is by pressing the little eyeball on a sketch, we will make it visible again so that it's easy to select. Every once in a while, you may want to select on an edge that's not visible to you at the moment. You don't need to rotate the camera. You can actually do this trick right here. Hold left click down where you think it's at, and then you're going to get this little drop down box right here. And everything that your mouse is passing through from you to infinity behind it will show up in this list. So I can select the edge just like that. If I want to select multiple things on this screen, like these two faces here, I don't need to hold shift and left click on both of them like I just did. What I can do is do a select by window here. So if you click down and hold to the left, everything that this box starts to cover will be selected. So in this case, we're going to select this face and then the whole body behind it. However, if I drag the mouse to the right, it will only select things that the box completely surrounds, like that. If I ever want to look directly at a surface that I don't have a standard view for, I can select that surface and then hit the look at button right there. Middle mouse twice and you'll zoom right in like this. Finally, if you have any questions about things such as how long is this line right here, you can select it and then look in the bottom right corner. This is always full of very useful information. Here we have one edge selected with the length of 25 millimeters. If I were to select the face, you're going to see one face with an area of 250 millimeters squared. Or if I were to click on this cylinder right here, you can see that it has a radius of 7.5 millimeters. A couple of other tools that are super handy here is if you press the S key, you can bring up the search option. So if I wanted to look up a line, then I could do that and select from all the different tools that we have available. And that could be much faster than finding it in the top left 
and navigating through all of these different little windows and pop-outs. Another good option is to right-click in an empty space here, and you'll bring up this wheel option, which will allow you to repeat the last command that you used, and then it gives you an option of several other commonly used tools. Finally, if you have any more questions about the software, a great resource that you can use is built right into Fusion 360. So hit the question mark in the top right. The one I like to use the most is under learning and documentation and then product documentation. This opens up a great resource where you can find lots of information and maybe answer specific questions that I may not address in the tutorial. Such as if you want to get more information about the interface here, you can tour the interface. And then there's drop downs for many different other things as well. If you have a certain question, you can type it right up here, such as custom view. So you can see right here, it brought back over 5,000 results for custom view. So maybe we see that custom view on drafting is what I was looking for. So this is a tool I use a lot when I'm trying to hunt down a specific answer to one of my questions. And that completes my crash course on how you're going to navigate the work environment here. We're going to put this to good use in the next lesson when we start to make our first parts. I'll see you there.